Hello everyone and welcome back to Imperator Rome. I'm Lord Foran, this time with another country I had this one as one of my favorite ones, Egypt. So Egypt is one of the roughly five successor kingdoms along with Thrace, Macedon, the Antigonids, and the Seleucids. Um, Egypt in some ways was the most successful of all of them, having a very long dynasty until Rome conquered it. You start out with a very relatively safe position. Uh, I was going to say very, but then I realized it's, you're not entirely safe, but you're pretty safe. By and large, the other successors will fight over Anatolia, and uh, they'll leave you alone for most of the game. But as Egypt, you start off with a pretty dense, high population for your size. The Antigonids have 3,000 population and only have 600... Uh, sorry, 300 cities and only have 600 more population. So you have a very dense, uh, very good population. So, how to start out as Egypt? Well, the big thing if you have the Heirs of Alexander Pact is to prepare for the war that is the downfall of the Antigonids. Um, at some point, Ant Antigonus himself will declare war on Macedon, and he will send his troops that way, at which point you will have a chance to invade his land over here. Um... And you want it to do that as soon as possible. So you want to have all your troops on the border so that you can rush in and take it before he dies. At which point his kingdom will be divided among any surviving successors. Um, especially if he, their kingdom flees to Greece. Uh, if so, you want to make sure you occupy all of this. Otherwise the Seleucids um, will get it as well. And... Yeah, you want to try and take as much as you can. It'll be a war goal where you everything you occupy, you take immediately. So you want to do all of this before they get involved. And they will get involved, and if so, they will usually get the whole Syria area, and you'll be trapped down here until you can take the bond, which will be quite some time. So uh, first thing to realize is you probably want to get um, a good portion of your troops ready and raised on the border, so that when you get that chance to declare war, you do declare war. Other than that, let's look it over. So, Egypt is Hellenic and Macedonian as their main culture, but they live in a world that they live in a world where they're foreign overlords over the different populations of Egypt, and more importantly, over the Kemetics of Egypt, the old Egyptian religion. You're trying to replace it at the beginning of the game with the Hellenic religion. Now, you do have the option to swap religions and join the Kemetics. Um, which will give you stability in the short run to keep your kingdom stable. Uh, however, you will be of a different religion than all the other successors. And so if they convert land, you will have to convert it back to Kemetic. Um, you do get some pretty powerful stuff if you go Kemetic, and you can even get some unique events and stuff. Um, if you want a real challenge, you stay as Hellenic and convert Egypt, which is not hard to do. Or you can go Kemetic and then have to try and convert the entire world. Really up to you. But that's a decision you want to make pretty early on while you can use this decision. This decision will not be available for long as you can start to convert stuff. Uh, you also have some other interesting decisions. You can build the Pharos Lighthouse. The Lighthouse of Alexandria. And you can build the Musion. I think that's how you say it. Temple to Muses which will give you bonus research. And the Pharos Lighthouse is a wonder. Um, you also start with the Great Pyramid of Giza Complex, which basically means that your subject states will stay very loyal to you and you will get extra tribute, which is very useful um, when it comes time to take over subjects. So, um, what should you do at the beginning of the game as Egypt other than prep for the war and maybe swap religions? You should put academies in your major cities in Lower Egypt, where you already have a good amount of Macedonian population because they will be promoted to nobles, and your research efficiency will go up. Egypt can easily out-tech the other successors, because it starts off with a pretty good power base um, in terms of nobles, and because it starts off with Bohiric, which is the main Egyptian culture here, already integrated, which means they will be citizens, and they will produce research as well, which is very handy for getting your tech up. So basically, Egypt can out-tech the other successors, at which point you can use your superior tech to crush all of them. 
In terms of innovations you should consider starting with, you could start with the basic um, military innovations, which are of course always a good possibility. I recommend, however, that if you're going to stay Hellenic, you start on the religious tree and you go for open religion, get great temples so that you can convert your population, and then go down to proscribed canon, which eats up six of your starting innovations, but will allow you to get the conversion policy laws, which will allow you to convert Egyptian, cult, uh, Egyptian religion to Hellenic religion, and it will make your life a lot easier. Um, otherwise, you will have revolts and stuff as you go along. Uh, if you want to spend the rest of your innovations in the religious tree, you can also go here, grab integrated culture happiness, and reduce governorship, which will, at that point, you will basically have a stable, somewhat stable Egypt. Outside of that, if you want to do the martial advances, you could try for the good old uh, levy uh, experience exploit, where you do you grab all these starting experience ones. Um, which can be very good. You can blaze through your uh, tradition tree. I don't know how long that strategy is going to last before it gets patched by Paradox, but until it does, um, grabbing anything that gives you experience will get you through your military traditions faster. Outside of that, it is worth spending some points in the supply limit stuff as Egypt because you will be fighting in deserts and stuff where the supply limit is not necessarily amazing, um, but it's not a great necessity. I would grab military sponsors when you get the chance to keep your generals of your legions loyal. In terms of civic advances, it's usually worth going down the trade side of the left tree here, getting all the way down to trade ports and stuff. Uh, as Egypt, you're going to have lots of trade goods to export, and Alexandria starts off pretty developed with lots of trade routes, and you know, this will only make Alexandria bring in about half the wealth of your uh, empire for some time. Uh, I don't really think you really need to go down much the right side of the civic tree early on. You can do it later, get some of this unintegrated culture happiness, which is always useful. Petition of minorities will help um, once you start conquering things. Um, oratory, though, is a tree you'll definitely want to go down. Uh, on the right side, you want to snag legal, legal patronage pretty early on. It just makes characters a little bit more loyal, um, which will make a difference over the course of the game. Other things you want to snag is you want to grab uh, loyalty of governors, loyalty of characters, and then down here, loyalty of characters as well. If you want, if you're having corruption issues, you have to go down the left side here, and you can get um, negative 0.04 um, corruption overall, and you can also get some bonuses to research down here as well, which makes it worth going down here. But as Egypt, you're going to have lots of research points anyway, so it's not a big necessity. Now, on the oratory tree, this is a very viable strategy of Egypt, is to basically get dozens of feudatories in Greece. Um, by doing so, you want to start off grabbing some of the... Some of the aggressive expansion changes, you want to get gradual economic integration here to get grand theaters, so you can convert people to your Macedonian culture. Um, it's the equivalent to the grand temple building. Uh, this one right here, Proxenoi, um, will give you more improved opinions. You're going to want to snag as much of those as you can. Um, as you go further down, you want to snag all three that boost this. You want to grab everything that reduces aggressive expansion. Probably want to get loyalty of generals. Get all the way down to winning land by the spear. If you have the chance to use it, you unlock the Imperial Challenge War Goal against all countries that are major powers or more. Uh, this is an absolutely broken innovation. Um, I've done it. I've been doing an Egyptian series. Some of you may know, and I basically took all of Persia. Um, basically, this part of the Seleucid Empire in one war using that uh, CB. It's absolutely ridiculous as Egypt. Um, that basically runs through most of the innovations you should consider starting with. I recommend the religious one snag the conversion stuff if you're going to go Hellenic. If not, you could probably start with military stuff, martial stuff as Kemetic. Uh, in terms of your military, you start off with pretty good levies. Um, you also start off with a legion, which it's worth building up. Be aware that your general of this legion, because it can be up to 47 units, 
uh, will be very powerful, have a strong power base, which is why grabbing stuff that increase general loyalty will help you quite a bit. Um, yeah, heavy infantry, heavy cavalry, try to avoid light infantry. Uh, camels aren't bad. Uh, avoid light cavalry. You start off with a war elephant, which is really nice. Um, if you get a couple of those, they can make a big difference in the war. And don't put too many engineers in. And that's basically building up a uh, the correct legion. You want to build that up fast for the upcoming war with the Antigonids, but you also want to raise your levies so that they carpet siege. When you start that war, you want to go and select uh, carpet sieging more than independent operations, because otherwise your units will not actually siege down all the land you need. Uh, in terms of traditions itself, the Egyptians have access to three, which is quite interesting. Uh, they start off with the two Greek ones and the Levantine kingdoms. So there are some really good stuff in the uh, Levantine kingdoms tree, specifically the right side of it. Uh, you can get four provincial innovations and you can get, uh, sorry, four provincial investments and four innovations. And you can also get some bonus loyalty of governors and stuff. Uh, this, for innovations, very few tradition trees have it. It will boost your tech even further. Uh, it's worth going down it just for that. In terms of the Greek trees, if you're going to use mercenaries, you can get some pretty good uh, bonuses out of the Greek city tree here. Um, I don't tend to go immensely far down it because it's mostly uh, ships, uh, light cavalry, and archers. But you can get a couple good heavy infantry bonuses at the beginning. And further down here you can get a hills and mountain combat bonus, which is a very nice one. The Greek tradition kingdom tree I find slightly more useful. Uh, if you can pull it off, you can get uh, more starting experience for your armies. So if you're going to use the army raise levies, wait four months, disband them technique to go through this, this is a good one to start with. You can get quite a few bonuses towards heavy infantry sieging ability and if you go down here and you manage to get some of the Aramaic culture which you should when you conquer Syria and integrate it you can get down to really cheap merc maintenance and heavy cavalry maintenance which will help quite a bit um, so I recommend if you can um, there's multiple ways to start if you're going to use the raise to span levies start off with greek kingdoms grab this veterans then swap to the levantine kingdoms and snag the four innovations and loyalty of governors and then pretty much do whatever else you want uh, in terms of s starting missions you have multiple options for uh, your starting missions um, egypt i think probably has one of the more deep mission trees because of their history so, um, if you go with the Greater Empire, uh, it will basically try and have you expand to conquer this area around Egypt. Uh, if you do Eastern Border, it will want you to conquer this area, which if you're going to do the uh, war against the Antigonids for their lands, this is the one you probably want to start with. Um, it'll basically want you to do all this area, you'll get some bonuses. This one, the Macedonian Pharaoh, is really powerful. Um, you can basically enshrine Ptolemy himself as a uh, deity. Um, so you can... Uh, I, I don't know how much this changes if you convert to Kemetic, but it can change. And then this one is basically conquer this area. Don't take this one first. Take one of these three. Um, this one is really cool. You can basically upgrade your city. Be aware, though, it does require quite a bit of gold and internal investment, so it might not be the best starting one. Uh, but down here you can get, Ptolemy will be considered a, a god upon his death, um, which you can get almost divine Basilis, uh, Basilius, which will give you population happiness, which is very useful for Egypt. Very, very useful. So be aware that it's a very good mission. You'll get an event if you go for the, uh, let's see, I think it's this one, greater one. You can basically, you'll send a mission here to try and subdue this region. You can send one of your generals to take it over. Sometimes he succeeds, sometimes he doesn't. Um, if he does take over, they become your subject. You can integrate them later. Otherwise, you got to conquer them. And as you can see, there's different ways to deal with them. 
and you get different bonuses at the end. If you complete it, you get your culture really happy with you. Oh, uh, let's see. What else could you possibly need to know? Um, mercenaries are going to be pretty useful as Egypt. Um, even though you get tons of levies, there's a lot of mercs along this coastline. Uh, we can't see them currently. But once you start hiring them for wars, and as Ptolemaic Egypt, you should never be broke, they will help quite a bit in your future wars against the Seleucids. It is very possible, by the way, to get over the 500 provinces needed to swap to the royal army. Basically, you have to become a great power. 500 provinces have the cohorts, which is at the bottom of the left military tree. And then you can make infinite legions. You can get those 500 provinces just conquering in this area. Um, there's a lot in Kush. Like, Kush doesn't look like it, but there's 50 there. You start off with that. That pushes you up. There's quite a few. Um, basically, you don't really have to worry about invading the Seleucids if you're worried about that. Another good strategy and the reason you want to take improved relations stuff um, from the oratory tree down here is that being of Macedonian culture, all of this, all these countries up here can become your feudatories. And there is more countries here than almost anywhere else except maybe in Iberia. <laughs> and you can go up to them and go to... Uh, let's say these guys and go influence offer feudatory as you can see you're only 60 away you improve opinions um, in this case we can only prove it 50 you send a gift you can usually make them feudatories feudatories don't cause diplomatic relation slots which makes the strategy ideal and more importantly you prevent other nations from getting control of greece if you do it and then you can just basically create a mass tidal wave of tiny subject armies to overwhelm everybody they'll come to your aid you can also go through here and get client status from some of these guys once you get stronger and improve relations um, you can basically take over this area without a war it's really cool and you have missions to do so um, anything else uh, well as Ptolemy you do start off with familial marriage which can help you a bit the downside with that is that Ptolemy himself has the blood of the lag Gadai, um, which is really good. It's definitely one of the better bloodlines in the game. The untreated culture group happiness and research points is very useful. However, it's only passed on patrilinearly, so if you have a daughter takeover, you will lose this uh, unless she marries uh, one of her relatives. So if you want to keep that bloodline, it may be worth actually swapping away to um, basically male inheritance or males inherited inherit over females uh, but it's up to you uh, once you get those conversion laws you can swap to different uh, conversion policies I recommend religious conversion uh, it will make a big difference especially if you build grand temples everywhere you can convert Egypt to Hellenic very rapidly the reason I mention that is it's a very good strategy for Egypt to build up your power base in Egypt itself that way it's stable because you at the start of the game your provinces down south here will not stay loyal to you for long because they are all comedic and they don't feel the need to follow a Hellenic ruler. Obviously that's easier if you convert to Cometicism. Um, they will stay loyal but there's that. Also interesting events if you conquer Syria from the Antigonids there can be an event where you get control of most of their subjects over here Judea and Samaria will become your tributary subjects, which is a very useful thing. Uh, and given time, they will ask to become your client state, and then you can simply annex them. There's no real reason to need to conquer them. One of your first actual conquests should be Nabatea over here. Um, those of you curious, here's Petra. Does not have the city of Petra, but you can build a wonder there. That's basically Petra. It's kind of cool. Um, Egypt has quite a few achievements. And most of them are generic to the Hellenics, but there's certain ones like build a tower wonder in Alexandria and Envoy down here. All this stuff. Uh, Egypt's a very easy nation to play. You have, starting out, you start out with three Kemetic deity, deities and one Hellenic, which is great if you're going to swap to um, Kemetic. Otherwise, you want to change the Kemetics to the Hellenics. More importantly, you start out with Alexander the Great as a deity. And every time you venerate him, you get two Macedonian freemen in your capital, which is a great way to grow your capital. And it's also a great way to get more uh, populations of your culture. And you also start off with the Conqueror's Molosseum in 
Alexandria, which will just help grow this more. Uh, be aware that other nations, if they conquer this, can steal Alexander's body, so you don't want to have that happen if you can help it. Uh, outside of that, at some point, you'll probably get an event that will say um, the King of Soloi will want Cyprus back. If you conquer Cyprus, there's an event where you can either release them as a client state for the whole island or a feudatory for one province. It's really up to you. I recommend doing the feudatory rather than the client state, which costs a diplo slot. Um, in terms of diplomacy, you already start with one used. Um, just because you have a client state already, these guys here, and you'll probably pick up other ones as time goes on. Um, feudatories are amazing. You could integrate them later. If you can pull it off, which is not easy to do, but as Egypt, if you can get divinity statute, because the bloodline gives you extra zeal. Uh, the aggressive ruler aggressive expansion impact and the popularity is amazing. Um, I guess I should mention the starting, you start as aristocratic monarchy. You should probably take morale of armies or morale recovery speed for your military idea, for your oratory corruption, and probably loyalty of generals and admirals. But you could always just skip the corruption and go for improve opinion. With the other ones you can get early on, you can easily get uh, feudatories in the first like 50 years of the game. And you start out with a unique heritage. You assimilate population slower, but you have a higher state religion happiness. And founding cities is very cheap for you, which is good because a lot of the area you're going to be conquering down south and in Arabia does not have cities. And obviously you'll want to build cities. And uh, I think that's about it. Egypt's definitely one of the easier nations. Um, I would place it up there, obviously below Rome, but above most of the other successors as the easy one to play. You don't face any early game invasions, which the Seleucids do, and you don't, obviously, you're not the Antigonids, Macedon, and Thrace, who all go to war and kill each other. You sit kind of pretty here. No one's going to bother you. Carthage actually is a pretty good nation to ally. You can usually get an alliance with them. Once you get some more improved relation modifiers, just be aware they will die to Rome eventually. And it's really not worth invading them through here, but you could. All this is uninhabited. Eventually you'll get events to colonize it, at which point it makes invading much easier. So anyway, that's going to be Egypt. Um, very fun nation, an unstable start, but once you get that under control either by converting your your ruler or converting the populace you'll be in a much better starting position anyway thank you guys all for watching hopefully you enjoyed this guide if you did please like subscribe check out my discord and stuff uh, i do have memberships on the channel not that you have to uh, give me money each month but i do appreciate it and i will see you guys all in another guide bye for now